Jeff Cornish is a meteorologist with AccuWeather, and I asked him why Hurricane Dorian's path has been so difficult to predict. Well, it has been very challenging to predict. Um, part of this uh, is because it's been on a path to move directly west. The computer models have uh, shifted a bit in recent days. And overall, we have been fully expecting it to move west and then to curve to the north. Uh, and that is the case still, although it's going to be doing so a little bit earlier. One of the factors that's been a little bit challenging and perhaps a little unusual with this storm is that there's an upper level low pressure system that's drifting south and west uh, and has drifted south and west and now is decaying south of Cuba. Uh, and that's a weather feature that's not typically in that location this time of the year. So that has been an extra variable in forecasting this. We also have the Bermuda High, which is well known to be a steering mechanism. That's also on the map as well. Uh, so that extra upper level low pressure system to the south of Cuba, responsible for some of these showers and storms, uh, that's a little bit of a deviation from the norm. In the last 24 hours, Dorian uh, changed course. Could we see that happen again? Well, we're growing more and more confident as every day passes and we close in on uh, the date in question in which it will make the big turn, we do grow more confident. So we don't expect to see any major surprises at this point. We are pretty confident that this is going to continue to decelerate its westward movement. It was moving at 13 miles per hour Wednesday and Thursday into Friday. Now we're down to 7 miles per hour. It's beginning that big, slow, treacherous, uh, really a nasty uh, grind over the northern part of the Bahamas. And uh, we are fully prepared to see this curve north. And we're confident in that because there's a trough of low pressure across the Midwest and moving into the northeastern U.S., and that's going to be a big influence in steering this around the western edge of that big bulky Bermuda High that's strengthening now uh, over the uh, west central Atlantic. With these uh, trajectories, we often see a cone. Uh, what is that cone, and what is its potential reach there? Well, we uh, are looking at the cone of uncertainty uh, that uh, is part of the forecast. Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, the National Hurricane Center and uh, forecast agencies like us here in the private sector with AccuWeather, uh, we uh, produce forecasts for the future. And the farther out you go, the greater the uncertainty is. Uh, and uh, the average error in a forecast track about five days into the future is about 200 miles. It sounds like a lot. but Back in 1970, a two-day forecast had an average track error of about 200 miles. So that's why as uncertainty grows and increases, uh, the cone expands as we go out to day five, as opposed to the more narrow cone for tonight and tomorrow. Uh, but uh, we have grown pretty confident that this is going to stay barely offshore off the east coast of Florida. Uh, and then there is admittedly more uncertainty when we get up into the Carolinas as it possibly could be overland, but it's just as likely to be even farther offshore. And one thing to keep in mind with this storm, it's a geographically tighter storm. It is growing in size, but it's a little smaller than your average hurricane. It's fiercer, but physically smaller. And because of that, a 50 or 60 mile difference between the coastline and the center of the storm could make all the world a difference into places like Florida. Rick Scott, a Republican senator from Florida, suggested on Sunday that there may be a correlation between climate change and the veracity of these storms. Is he right? It's hard to say whether there's true uh, change here to the climate that's driving these storms or not. Uh, your average climatologist would say yes. Now, just for perspective, Dorian now has uh, had winds this afternoon of 185 mile per hour sustained winds. That made it uh, a tie for the second fastest wind for any hurricane in Atlantic Basin history, uh, matching uh, Wilma uh, from 2005, Dorian again uh, this uh, today, Gilbert from 1988, and the Labor Day hurricane of 1935. Only Allen, which slammed into Texas with 190 mile per hour winds uh, 39 years ago, had faster winds in the Atlantic. There are a lot of uh, recent storms on this list, but uh, seven others from uh, earlier times. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, here's uh, a list that might surprise some. When we list the number of Category 4 and 5 hurricanes making landfall only on Florida's east coast, so we're looking at a specific piece of data here, we had a frenzied stretch, seven of them, between 1926 and 1950. Can you imagine 1945 to 1950? It happened that many times, uh, four times there in that five-year stretch. 
The only since then to make landfall on the Florida's east coast was Andrew in 1992 as a Category 5. So here's a piece of data that uh, might suggest otherwise. It's really hard to say. Uh, with a, uh, you know, The climate is a very challenging and complicated thing. So typically the answers don't come easy when we look at a very complicated network of feedbacks and so forth.